Assalamu alaikum family. Please stand for prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely I turn myself to thee, O Allah, trying to be upright, to he who has originated the heavens and the earth, and I'm not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he in this am I commanded, I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant, and I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none can grant me protection against faults but thee. And guide me to the best of morals, for none can guide me to the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. And O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful. And make the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified. And O Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. Amen. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who appeared to us in the divine person of Master Fard Muhammad, the great Mahdi, to whom praise is due forever. I further thank Allah for raising in our midst for one from among us, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, as his risen and exalted Christ. And if I thank God for the rest of my life or beyond, if I can live longer than that, I would never... Uh, uh, be able to thank the one who raised me up, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he is their divine reminder, their divine warner, and our Messiah today. So it is in their names that I like to greet you, and we like to greet you once again with the Nation of Islam's greeting words of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Praise be to Allah. Give yourselves a round of applause, family. We're honored by your presence, and we're very, very happy to see you. Whenever you stand on this side, man, I'm telling you, you look beautiful, brothers and sisters. You look like the future. You look like hope. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to see this on the news. You're not going to turn on NBC, CBS, or ABC and see black people with smiley faces, smiling faces, loving hearts, and a mind that's ready to make a move and do some things. So when I'm looking at you, I see people who are ready to build a nation. Is that right? Yes, so I'm, all, I'm thankful to Allah for your presence and you taking the time to come out with us down here at Mosque number 12. We also want to thank you for submitting to our check procedure. It's very important in a time like today. The Final Call newspaper, the front of it, talks about how Allah's wrath is right there. We're thankful to Allah that we are properly guided and able to be guided enough, clear enough to be able to even have a check procedure to make sure that this room in this area and wherever we meet is safe for us to be able to put our guard down for a second. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So I'm thankful to Allah for Minister Rodney, our student regional minister here in Philadelphia, for allowing me to even come before you and share a couple words that Allah is putting on me to share. This is not a lightweight thing that we do here. When we come before our people, we come before our people with the greatest respect and honor because we are the nation who knows that whenever you look at a black man or a black woman, you're looking at God. So we want to give you, I want you to give yourselves a round of applause one more time before we go ahead and get into this there's a we opened up with the greeting words of peace for all those I believe everybody who came here I've seen you before but all who come here we know what assalamu alaikum means but in our final call newspaper I believe is page 26 where uh, it's entitled Farrakhan the Traveler and Jabril was writing about the greetings of the lost people of the world. 
So when you ha we want to make sure that you get the Final Call newspaper so you can check out exactly what your brother is saying. But I say it from time to time, and we know that a lie is powerful because you can think something and it pops right up in that Final Call newspaper. That's why we got to make sure we get that. You know what I mean? So we can be clear on what's going on, current events and everything else, what to eat, what not to eat, page 19. Page 20, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is always giving us what we need to hear in the period that we're living in. Whatever's going on, whether it be uh, racial hatred, crimes and stuff like that, the minister will actually have, because he spoke so much, it'll be an excerpt on page 20 where the minister is giving us guidance to get us through these troubled times. So we thank Allah for that. But on page 26 with Brother Jabril, he was touching on the greetings of this world, that when we see each other, and we know words are powerful because it says right there in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if the word was God, that means that word is very important. And the last thing we need to be doing is playing with our word. And that's why in our supreme wisdom, the Muslims in the nation of Islam, we say that we would give our word before our word fails. It says, have you not heard that our word is bond and bond is life and we will give our life before our word shall fail. So with that in mind, what words do we say when we see each other in this world when you're not clear on exactly what we should say to each other when we see each other? We say, how are you? <laughs> we say, hello. We even call God's place of abode a kingdom. But Brother Jabril was breaking down how in Arabic, the language is very, very mathematically correct and clear and precise. We don't refer to God. We call Allah, Allah. We don't call him God because God is a dog spelled backwards. Even though these things may look like it's minute, it really ain't. It's really not. And that's the reason I even pointed to that scripture in John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So we don't use words lightly, lightly. You know, when we really understand where we are and what Allah is doing for us, we could just never think Allah enough. We are in a time where the brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam we are one of the few people that believe and teach that Almighty God Allah came to us in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, reveal, uh, uh, fulfilling scripture and keeping his word. Right. You know what I mean? So we need to really focus on what's being done with us. We have a powerful teaching, you know, from, the, for, from Almighty God Allah through his prophets. So the Holy Quran, it opens up chapter two, which is a chapter entitled Al-Baqarah. That's the cow. The first verse, right after we say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, Allah says that I, Allah, am the best knower. Mm, come on. We got to look at that. And one thing I always implore with everyone that I'm in, I'm, I encounter, slow down when you're reading the scriptures. Don't read so fast because you're not reading something that Brother Zebulon said or any of these the brothers, Brother Joseph or even Minister, Minister Rodney. You're reading what Almighty God, Allah, has revealed to his people. So if Allah has a letter for you, how important should you look at that letter? So we're living in a time today where we're catching it. We had a final call ministry that the paper is even entitled. That is no longer just Muhammad speaking, but it's also a final call at the same time. Right. Right. It's a final call because of the things that we are all going through. Yes, I'm not a psychic or a mind reader, but I can look at every one of you and know, like me, you're going through a lot of hell. Yes, Am I right? Come on. Well, I have to talk about the Holy Quran, chapter 29, a chapter entitled The Spider, mm. where Allah says, does man think? that he will make it on saying we believe and not be tried. Oh, oh yeah. Surely we tried those before you, right. or indeed we tried those before you. So why would Allah try us like that? For few reasons, but I'm just going to touch on a few. He would try us because he would get a chance to see, and we would get a chance to see the truthful ones from the liars. Right. 
So this is what Allah is saying. Because all of us, I believe, if I ask you, do you love Allah? You will say, oh, I love Allah. Oh, I love Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Oh, I'm a Muslim. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. He's my God. All of those words sound beautiful, don't they? But how many people show it in their life? So we have on Friday night, student minister Ava Muhammad, a, 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 a lesson entitled Self-Improvement, the Basis for Community Development. Self-Improvement, the Basis for Community Development. We can't improve anything until we improve ourselves. Is that right? Praise be to Allah. So when you're properly guided by Allah, all of the, everything that we need to build is right there. Yes, sir. So if we have all the tools that we need to build this great nation that the Bible and the Holy Quran prophesies of, that the last would be the first, that the tail would be the head. Matthew chapter 19, uh, uh, chapter 19, verse 30. It says that the last, yes, sir, will be the first. Well, I mean, we don't have to be rocket scientists to know who the last is. <laughs> I mean, in my mind, when you're filled with the spirit of God, and that's how I'm just busting with, with, with joy, family. But I know who I'm looking at. Like I said before, I'm looking at God. So to me and to us, every time you see a black man or woman, you're looking at God. But to the people and the powers that be, the people of this world, when they see any one of us, the last thing they're thinking about is us being valuable. So they treat us just like they see us. Is that right? They treat us last, but we're living in a time right now where all praise is due to Allah. We don't have to worry about how they see us and how they feel about us. All we need to do is improve on ourselves, connect ourselves to the one God, Allah, whose proper name is Allah, and there's nothing that any one of us can do. We have to unite as well. We cannot do these things separately. Malcolm X said it best. He said, if I keep these fingers separated, all I can do is put a little sting mark on your face, but if I pull these components together, these units together, I can knock you out. So we have to knock out the enemy, just like it says in uh, the Holy Quran, chapter 61, entitled The Ranks. It says that Allah, not me, but Allah loves those who fight in ranks, upon ranks, as if they were a solid wall. And this is all we're sharing with you, family. This is all we're offering you. We're offering you the unity of that solid wall that Almighty God Allah is talking about. And when we're solid and one like that, there's nothing we can't do. Come on. So at this time, Brothers and sisters, I want you to put your hands together. Let us bring to this rostrum our student regional minister of the Nation of Islam, Minister Rodney Muhammad. Come on now. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in the most holy name of Allah, the one, the all wise, the true and the living God, we thank Almighty God, the revealer of all truth, the sender of all prophets of whom we make no distinction. We thank Allah for revealing the Torah to Moses. We thank Allah for revealing the gospel to Jesus. And we thank Allah for the revelation of the Holy Quran through Muhammad of Arabia. As a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's life-giving message, though, I'm most grateful to Allah uh, for his own intervention in our affairs, as it was predicted that he would do. We thank Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Fad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. Soon the world will have to learn more about this man. Um, we are fascinated. Um, these people have captured our imagination, the great luminaries that have been born out of his wisdom. Uh, certainly we talk about Malcolm X, we talk about Muhammad Ali, we talk about even the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and certainly the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. But all of this had a beginning. 
uh, it started somewhere. Someone had to teach. He said, well, Elijah was teaching. Yeah, well, someone was teaching him. Um, well, Farrakhan is teaching, but Elijah taught him. Elijah taught Malcolm. Elijah taught Muhammad Ali. But all of it began somewhere. Uh, and uh, they can't seem to get rid of it. Everywhere that they spread us out, somebody starts sharing, and then uh, before you know it, uh, that sharing brings about a community. Uh, and people can't seem to get away. Can someone turn that light on over there? Thank you. Um, we thank you all. Uh, because as God came and raised the Son of Man, um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, we are grateful uh, to him. These are unselfish men we're talking about. They don't mind seeing others grow out of the wisdom that they have. They aren't trying to contain it only for themselves. But it is we, uh, as I'm reading more of the honorable Elijah Muhammad's message, we're not seeing as much manifestation of it. And so it makes the so-called Negro want to question uh, what's being taught and the teacher. But it is our slowness to awaken to a conscious state from this teaching uh, that is slowing up the pace for us to see what our souls yearn for, freedom, justice, and equality. We don't have no one else to blame but ourselves. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad did his part. He made what is called a clear delivery of the message. It was clear because he used the English language, so you didn't have to say, well, we didn't know Arabic. A lot of us are trying to teach in Arabic now, and every few words we got to stop and try to tell somebody what this means in Arabic and that, man, we're not going to grow from that. Right now, the Negro needs the truth spoken English. Uh, we are under a liar in the English tongue. We need a truth teller that can teach from English lesson, not Arabic lesson. We want to learn Arabic, and we taught Arabic under the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and to some degree the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. It's English we have an our problem with. Uh, we were lied to in English. We got to get it straight in the language that we were lied to in. You can't run to another tongue. So we are thankful to Almighty God because the Quran says that he uh, will not bring a message to a people except in the language of that people. He got to make sure they understand it just as they were brought into a great misunderstanding in that language. In that same language, the correction must be made. Yes, so God is teaching us a valuable lesson here. And we thank Almighty God for the most honorable boy, Elijah Muhammad. Some people say, well, he didn't speak English correctly. He spoke it more correct than you and I are. On, you know, we're out here saying black lives matter, but every time we look around, somebody black is killing somebody yes, black. Right. So what we're saying is in the present tense, but what we're doing is in the past tense. And so you don't have... Uh, subject verb agreement the honorable Elijah Muhammad said that means there's an impediment in your speech you know you talk like you want to be a free man so you go and make a picket sign and you protest that's in the present but then you go ask the white man for a sandwich that's in the past you don't have I don't have subject verb agreement that's an impediment, and we're speaking the wrong language. We got to learn to speak the correct language, and that language can help bring us out of the misery index that you and I are living in. We thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a student in the English language. Uh, and he was a student in the English language before he made contact with the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but he took the English message, content of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave. Why? Because he gave it so clear. Yeah. A clear message doesn't mean that he just makes it understood. Part of, as I'm learning, a clear delivery is to be free from hatred. Yeah. 
in your heart for your own people to be free from confusion in your heart over your own and your open enemy to make a clear delivery of the message you can't be holding a personal grudge and honorable elijah muhammad had every reason and right to hold a grudge folks trying to kill him for seven years uh, people trying to tear down what he's building up. He had a mosque with 750 registered Muslims. The hypocrites took it down to 12. But he didn't hold hatred in his heart for those hypocrites. He kept preaching the message free of any hatred of them. That's what you call he's clear of any kind of, you know, when you got the title Muslim, anybody buying a home, a piece of property, you know, they have to have what's called a title search. Make sure there's no one that has the property in question encumbered. To make sure that no one else has a claim on it, you make a title search. So Master Flawed Muhammad gave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad a title for us. And it's the title Muslim. Well, in order to do that, he had to make sure that no one else had a claim on us. That way he could make the only claim as our friend. And so I thank Allah for Master Fahad Muhammad raising the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But to the two of them, I'm indebted for the one they gave us today who's making a clear delivery of the message. People have done all manner of evil to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And even to the frustration of many that want to help the minister, he still shows love. He still shows courtesy. He extends the olive branch even to those that have proven to be his enemies. But see, Allah grants you success when you take his message and make sure it's free and clear of every opinion, free and clear of every grudge, free and clear of any kind of thoughts of revenge against somebody. Some people only use what the minister says so they can beat up other believers with it. Some people only use what the minister says so they can make their point to try to make themselves more important than the rest of the flock. I'm telling the truth. Some people can quote the minister when you got your miserable business and raggedy affairs in front of the believers trying to show it as a standard so you can put someone else down and be judgmental as the minister said. But you can't quote the minister when it comes to being better. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan said what made him a good student is anytime he was corrected by his teacher, he took the correction and when his teacher saw him again, he saw a better man than the one that he saw when he made it. How many of us are willing to make the correction? Some of us want to stay just like we are. But we ain't got that kind of teacher today. We intend to make something new. So I thank Allah for all of them. I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. We are just taking uh, some closing points now on high civilization. We know now that if civilization is one having knowledge and the civilization is high, then the knowledge got to be higher. If you have a problem, a line of thinking got you into that problem. The same line of thinking that got you into the problem is not the line of thinking that will free you. You have to have a better line of thinking than the line of thinking that got you into the trouble that you're in. The original man got into trouble and he fell into the hands of a weaker man made from himself or one of his own. That's, that's the snapshot of the story. And it was a line of thinking that got him there. Are you following now? See, dissatisfaction is a line of thinking. There was dissatisfaction trillions of years before Mr. Yakub. But there was not a devil before him. Y'all better listen now. Because the kind of dissatisfaction that the original 
nation and world had was constructive discontent. You can have a home that provides you with all the rooms that you want, but you may be dissatisfied with how it looks. You want to improve it. That's constructive discontent. You may see yourself where you are now. You say, well, I need to study to get more credentials behind me so that I can improve my lot and do something. That's constructive discontent. What gets destructive is when somebody wants to exalt themselves over the flock. No one species is more important than the entire flock. Are you following now? So um, when you're dissatisfied and what you desire is out of league with the will of Allah, then Allah cannot grant you that. You can't pray for anything. The prayers that God hears and answers are prayers that are in harmony with his will. He will not support us in evil. You say, well, did he support the white man? No, he allowed for the white man to do what he's doing. You say, but we didn't allow it. No, you don't allow it now because you're coming into consciousness. When you was ignorant, you accepted all of it. And so did I. We're only coming into consciousness now. There's a way out of this, and it's not picking up arms fighting him at the Alamo. Huh? It's challenging ourselves to be changed. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, stop looking for your enemy to change his mind. You change your mind. You say, but you know, brother, we ain't doing nothing. And what they did to us, they reduced us to nothing. And when we look around, we ain't got nothing. When you change your way of thinking to his way of thinking, mm, just think about it for a minute. Things that are sitting around that you thought were useless to be reduced to nothing looks useless. To be made nothing looks useless. To have nothing looks useless. But nothing was what it was before God brought himself into existence. We can take nothing. That's how bad we are. If I can use such a cheap term. We can take the original people, we can take nothing and weaponize it and sit down and do nothing. You don't have to get a gun. You don't have to march and protest. You don't have, just sit down and do nothing. And if you want to see hysteria in the white world, they'll cut and stop everything that they do in the whole emergency meetings. We got an emergency. What is it? The Negroes ain't cooperating. What are they doing? What did they do? They ain't doing nothing. That's just the point. They're not doing nothing. They're not shopping at Rite Aid. We didn't see them in Acme. All their children are gone out of our schools. They're not shopping at our stores, the corner store or the superstore. We put up sales and they just sailed away. You say, well, that's impossible. We couldn't do that. If we did that, we wouldn't have provision. We're only talking about 48 hours or 72 hours. That's all it takes to drive the white world crazy. That's how much they depended on us. Triple darkness can be weaponized when wisdom comes in. The unequaled wisdom of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know, here in the book of Ezekiel, it says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out into the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was filled with dry bones. He 
caused me to pass by and round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, then prophesy unto the bones. And see, that's what the Son of Man has been doing. The first Son of Man was described by Jesus in the book of Matthew where he said, as the light shineth, from the east even unto the west, so shall the coming. He's just coming. He hadn't arrived yet. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. When something is coming, it wasn't sent. When something is coming, he's coming under his own idea. Because if he was sent, he'd have to function and operate under the idea of the sender. That makes sense? Yes, sir. So he's coming, he's, he's operating under his own strength. The strength of his own knowledge. The strength of his own unequaled wisdom. Nobody's with him. He's by himself. There were wise people in the east, but they weren't wise enough to see his purpose for going to the west. Other than that, there would have been a committee of them. They weren't in agreement with him, so he came by himself. He's coming to a land where they have taken knowledge from the east and corrupted it. And because of their corruption, if a clear light comes, meaning somebody that's got a clear message, but he needs somebody to make a clear delivery of it. He don't trust nobody to make a clear delivery of it. So he's coming himself. That makes sense. But the folks who have lied. And corrupted knowledge. If he makes a clear delivery and expression of that knowledge. It will expose them. So they don't want to see him coming. They're not happy about him coming. So when he comes. He's got a. Sneak in. Come on, right. He can't have a parade. Right. There'll be no press conference. That's right. No announcement that can draw attention for the scripture say he comes unobserved. Right. People in this world, they like celebrity status. If you ain't no celebrity, they just pass you by. We're looking for the Kardashians, or we're looking for this one or that one. You know, folks get themselves into celebrities. Some of us are on social media trying to make ourselves a celebrity. We're desperate for attention. He knows that. So he comes unobserved. He ain't on Facebook. Because he got to teach the people how to face their real enemies, not hiding behind some code name. Expressing yourself through 42 characters under Twitter. That's all it'll allow. You go to 43, it cancels out or something. You got to. He's. I'm trying to get you. He comes undetected. Even the scholars. Who are the only ones really reading the books. Because they have dumbed down the population in the West. You no, know, Brother Rodney, we, we got religion, you know, and our pastors and bishops and everything, they've been to school. What kind of school? See, it's the kind of school that dumbs us down. Well, I believe the Bible is right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it's right. He said, but we see it wrongly because we've been dumbed down in our schools. This is the colored man. The colored man will give you some facts, but then he'll color the facts. And, and he, he kills in us through the metaphorical 
needle from the nurse. Because the needle's, you know, it's a perfect weapon. You can stab somebody with it, shove it right in their brain, and people be looking for the murder weapon, and it's hidden right inside of the victim. They don't even know it's there. So the metaphorical needle causes the man to lose balance, right? Yes, sir. We lose our equilibrium. Right. You start stumbling instead of marching. And people around the world see you, but they don't see the needle. So they're not saying, who did that to you? They're saying, what's wrong with you? You sitting here free enough to build all your own institutions and you laying at the door of somebody else. You got farmland, you could grow your own food, but you waiting on somebody else to feed you. You got some of the best seamstress in the world, but you waiting on Gucci and Poochie to come out with something. And then they make themselves the standard. And when you don't look like the standard, we buying cream and put on ourselves. I mean, right now in Africa, one of the biggest sellers of cream to try to lighten your skin is being sold over there. So people are looking at us. They're not saying, who did this to them? People are saying, what's wrong with them? It looks like they got every advantage to bring themselves into a great civilization of people. Right position, wrong condition. The dry bones are in the valley, but the bones are not connected. If you got bones, then you know life used to be there. As I said, the original people always had dissatisfaction, but that was constructive discontent. But the minister said they had never had a devil. Now somebody can take your dissatisfaction and bring you to the point that they are in where they're disappointed. He don't give, the devil don't give God no other reason. He other than disappointment, because you caused me to be disappointed. I'm messing up your, your people. First, I'm coming from the right. I'm going to give you some Dukes of Hazard looking folks. Trump, Trumpites. Cuss you out. Got swastikas on their arms and riding in pickup trucks and tie people up and drag them till they tear their bodies apart and I'm going to give you that time. Then I'm going to give you the white liberal over here. And now you're really confused because you say, well, son, I don't want nothing to happen to the white folks. You ain't got nothing to do with it. No way. Neither do I. I mean, but, you know, you say they're kind of nice and everything. Take white privilege away, though. You might see something real nasty come up out of the folks. You take away white privilege. So I'm coming from the right, but I'm coming from the left side, too. I'm coming from in front of you and behind you. So when you turn around to look for history as a reference point to help you see what's in front of you, you're going to be blind because we took your history from you. That's why you got the 1619 Project. Because you don't see yourself as an ancient people that was here long before 1619. And with that inserted into school life, as I said last week, it's all with the presumption that everybody can read. So we have to ask ourselves now, if we're in the work of bringing about a new civilization we have to be tooled upright. And so we were showing, as the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has been showing us about the building of human potential, we got great potential as a people. And Allah gives us, in a world of sport and play, he gives us a sign 
that when the enemy sets up that kind of world that he's preoccupied with, that he makes trillions of dollars with, Allah took the slave and caused the slave to rise to the top in the world of sport and play. We, got, we have some of the best boxers. If you talk about heavyweight champions, you gotta talk about somebody black. You talk about baseball, you gotta talk about, well, baseball, man, we, we had the Negro League. Philadelphia had the stars. These were our own teams. I mean, Josh Gibson knocked the ball out of Yankee Stadium. No one, white or black, has, has matched what Josh Gibson done. Back catcher, back catcher for the Homestead Grays. You had uh, Satchel Paige out of Kansas City. Just talking about the Negro Leagues, you know? He could pitch a ball, and by the time it got to your bat, it looked like it was a golf ball. Missed it every time. I watched a documentary on the Negro Leagues, and they showed a game where Josh Gibson was in it, and so was um, um, Satchel Paige. And because they were so popular, 53,000, did I say 53? 53,000 black folks, so-called Negroes, came out to that game. And because we were the only ones there, we went and got wholesale some popcorn, hot dogs, beer, and everything. My, my point is, when the man looked at this, 53,000 black folks all spending money with each other, this ain't a baseball game, this is an economic statement. Huh? Yes, then they said, nigga, only white boys use the baseball field during the day. If you all could find a way to play at night, you could do it. We found a way to do it. And we put some lights out there. They've been having night baseball ever since. They didn't invent that. We started that with the Negro League. So now Blanche Ricky, he had to try to figure a way to get somebody from the Negro League in. Jackie Robinson wasn't chose because he was the best in it. He just had the best temperament to try to work him in to get him into the major leagues. Because their real aim was to destroy the Negro Leagues because it made so much money in a world of sport and play. Uh, when it came to singers, See, I mean, under, under Franklin Roosevelt, see, you had Marion Anderson right out of South Philly here, as I said before. But, you know, the daughters of the Confederacy, they weren't going to have this black woman singing up in no facility. So they set it up for her to sing right in front of the Lincoln Memorial. And as I said before, Marion Anderson is remembered. We don't know these white girls that didn't want to. You can't name one of them. Neither can I. But we know her. Huh? See, when God caused a slave to rise to the top, Jack Johnson was beating all of them. They tied him up with a white girl, then come trump him up with charges. Did you know he owned the Cotton Club before Arnie Madden took it? Yeah, Jack Johnson owned the Cotton Club. And then when he sold it to Arnie Madden, that gangster out of New York, then they made it where only whites could come, but only blacks could be entertainers there. No white entertainers were brought there. So, so a lot of our names were made big. Duke Ellington, you know, uh, all of these people. This is our history now. Good or bad, it's our history. And if you go back and look at it through the lens that the honorable boy Elijah Muhammad gave us in his unequal wisdom, you could see God's hand was with us all the time in this valley. They're scratching their heads trying to figure out. When Mr. Muhammad had all this wisdom, they went in there and snatched it all out of his room. He had turned himself into the FBI. They questioned him all night. He never pleaded the fifth. Trump and them are running around, they pleading everything to keep from, they trying to keep from going into court. Mr. Muhammad answered their question. They weren't ready for his answers. They put him in prison. Now they can't get Islam out the prison. They looking around trying to get up and they, here's a prisoner writing, he don't care. The devil got me in the belly of the beast. I'm writing the true followers of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> You ain't going to get rid of this. This is God's time. 
This is a time for a new civilization. And the bones got to come together. But once they've come apart, nobody knows how to join the bones where they belong. Every bone got a place. And if you put a bone out of place, then the body can't come together right. Make sense? So the bone said, we're disconnected from our part. But now, um, you know, this son of man, as I said, the first one had to be Master Fard Muhammad. He came on his own, under his own strength. The second son of man, Jesus used Moses' work, but not, not in Egypt. He pointed to Moses' work in the wilderness, which is the caves and hillsides of Europe. See, that was West Asia. Only after we put some new residents there, then we called it Europe. Is that right? That's the way Mr. Muhammad says it. He says West Asia, as they now call it Europe, when we got rid of the folks from the Holy Land and ran them across the desert, those that live went into the caves and the hillsides, and we call that Europe. Hillsides and the rope that binds them in. And history shows that we tried to bind them in with the Great Wall of Durban, built right at the foot of the Caucasus Mountains, right? We were trying to keep raiders from coming out of the mountains back into the civilized world. But the third son of man is where I'm reading from, because this son of man in Ezekiel had an experience on the wheel. The one Jesus talked about is the honorable Elijah Muhammad because Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent of the wilderness, so shall the son of man be lifted. That can't be the one coming from the east. He was already up on his own. But what lifted the other one up was strong law. Why? Because Jesus remembered that in order to bring the man out of the cave, a board had to be put in his back, meaning strong law was given to them. All of this has meaning. You find it in the Masonic order. A hidden knowledge that they try to protect, but they, they have rituals where they put on the, uh, the animal skin and they put on a cow toe on the neck, right? Just like you're leading something that is beast-like even though it's in human form. Think that over. So Jesus in the book of John, he doesn't talk about Pharaoh. In fact, you don't even see him talking about Pharaoh in Matthew, Luke, or Mark. But in John, when he talks about Moses and the work of Moses, he don't talk about Egypt and being freed out of Egypt because the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that's a prophetic picture. That's not something that happened 4,000 years ago. That's something happening right now. The serpent of the wilderness was a man who came up out of the caves and hillsides of Europe with a diseased body. The first medicine that was made was to take the gene of a rat, the gene of a cat, its natural enemy, and the gene of a dog, its natural enemy, and combine these to make a creature. Everything got a purpose. I read in the Twitter thing, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said, the messenger said there's good in everything. But what we need today is all good. That's why the Messiah has to come. Somebody that can take away all the bad and bring all the good. Get, I see some faces. Y'all don't mind me talking about this. Huh? But the serpent is wrapped around the scepter of the law established by Moses. And this scepter with the serpent wrapped around it, interestingly enough, is on 
all the medical buildings in the world. You just go in there, yeah, I got to see, I got to get my pills renewed. You ain't even looking at that symbol up there. They're involved in a work. They set up medicine, and the pig was used for medicine. If you go study the medical field, at the basis of a lot of the medicines made came from the swine. That's where he's most useful. He don't belong on our dinner plate. I remember as a child in the 60s sitting up in the clinic. They used to have the pictures up there. Some of y'all might remember this. I don't know what they got up there now. You know, it's so modern now that you can click and watch what you want to watch, I guess. But just think this over. They would show breakfast. They would show the egg cooked over it with the two strips of bacon. Then they show lunch, Oscar Mayer bologna and the sandwich, you know. And then a pork chop and some vegetables or something on the plate, carrots and everything. No, I'm just saying. But they were showing you must have three meals a day. So then I get to the nation. And the first thing I'm reading is one meal a day. Now, just show you how the mind works. They colored our mind. I don't know how you all grew up, but you know, my mother was the youngest out of 16. And so her aunts would be on, aren't you hungry? Right? Well, not right now, Aunt Hazel, I'm not hungry. Well, come on and eat something before you get hungry. You know, <laughs> wait a minute now. I mean, we just, <laughs> and um, <laughs> God bless the boy, but I'm telling you. But this is how, so I get to the nation, and it's like one meal a day, and I'm reading between four and six is the best time. You know, you get to the day, you're trying to do everything right, and you say, let me see. Everything. <laughs> but when you've been used to eating all day, like an animal. Jesus, when will four o'clock get here? I'm trying to. <laughs> And then when you did it, and man, don't let you go a week. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Uh, you know, you start out a little sheepish. You're trying to get, okay, you do like this. People tell you. But boy, when you get that one meal a day, and you know what it's showing you? You took the first major step to mastering your own circumstances. Because it made so much sense. The brain is an organ, stomach's an organ. Why should the stomach be giving orders to the brain? Think about that. Mr. Muhammad was teaching me discipline is being able to give yourself a command and obey it. You want somebody else to obey you, but you can't even tell yourself nothing and follow through on it. So, so um, this son of man, he's preaching freedom, justice, and equality. I imagine he's on the radio. He's probably got tapes. He told them, look, you preach to them and everything. But finally, Allah tells him, um, step back. Let the winds speak to the bone. And the, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, that's circumstances. Like gas prices going up, food prices going up. Soon, stock market will go down and jobs will be lost because companies will be closing. And we didn't build the companies that Mr. Muhammad, you know, he didn't say do for self. Well, you know, messenger said do for self. That, that's not all he said. He said do for self or suffer the consequences. You have a choice whether you want to do for self or not, but if you don't do for self, if I don't do for self, there's a consequence. I've got to pay a price. If a man is telling you, I'm not trying to build something just so we can look good and opulent and rich 
We need a program to fight against the day of want. We just don't see it looks like America's going to always have some. She's only 5% of the Earth's population. She consumes over 60% of the Earth's resources. So out of all people on the Earth, the people in America have it best because we've got just about everything you can name at our fingertips. Resources are sold here. And how much of the useful land does the color man use? Six million square miles. We went through that. So it can't be covering Australia, New Zealand, Europe, and everything. Because the messenger said America is six million square miles. So the drama of the son of man coming, raising the son of man, the two of them working now on another one who becomes a son of man and has an experience on the wheel, he's the one preaching to the people that are disconnected. But if it's a bone, then it used to belong to something that was alive. Does that make sense? Bones don't just come out on their own. They're a part of a structure, the framework of a structure. But when that structure dies, when it decomposes and all of its parts have withered away because the bone is made out of the stone of the earth, the bones remain. So what used to be a people has been reduced to bones. That original man, that original woman, they had never encountered devil. So to make an original man, an original woman, you can't make them exactly like the ones that stumbled over devil. Day later, you gotta be a day wiser. So if you read the student enrollment, it doesn't say who was the original man. It said who is. Is is the present state. Something new is being made. No, you're not going to be, I can't be just like they were before this 6,000 year period because if they were great enough, they wouldn't have even let the devil take over. Amen. Just told you how we buried our wisdom and hid things and everything. It allowed for this one to work for six days. Come on. And now after six days, I'm just going through some of this, but you know, the, 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 the book of Daniel talks about uh, a stone being hewn out of a mountain without hands. That means that the politics and the sociology of this world ain't got nothing to do with this group of people that are coming out of a great government. It's been established through the biblical scholars and writers that when the Bible talks about mountains, it's talking about great governments. The bigger the mountain, the bigger the government the bigger the civilization. So there was a great mountain, but a stone was hewn out of that mountain. That's a people that lived under that government. Without hands means that the handiwork of God is at work bringing these people out. Are you listening to me? God got his own idea about civilization. If he let us do this thing on our own, we crazy as hell. So um, the stone smote an image that Daniel sees. And Daniel sees a statue, first of all, it's made of gold. Then it's made of silver. Then it's made of bronze, but it ends up in iron. If you look at iron, starting from the feet because at the feet the iron is mixed with miry clay so something real strong is mixed up with something real weak what Daniel saw was the end of time the great statue that had legs and feet of iron if you go study the iron age it lasted over 2,000 years with iron 
The armies could make themselves stronger. With iron, they could build, and their civilizations became stronger than the ones that preceded them. Are you listening to me? See, with iron or, you know, um, that age brought more and more people into tools and the means to grow their own civilization. But it was made of gold first. See, America used to be on the gold standard. It was made of silver. She used to have the silver note, but she abandoned both of them. And Mr. Muhammad said, this is what's going to bring about the demise of the dollar. And when the dollar goes down, the government is going down right behind it. Why? Because once they took the gold away, there was no guarantee of the value of the dollar bill. When they went off the silver note, there was no longer any guarantee of the value of the dollar bill. Well, then what's giving it its value? The government's word. The same government you don't trust. Because if, if all Americans trusted the government, hell, then you'd vote in every election. But more and more people are abandoning the polls. Why? I don't trust politics. They all lying. You just want me to vote for the Democrats. They worse than the Republicans and all that. So we don't trust the government. But you trust their money. Gold is not on the dollar. Silver is not on the dollar. The same kind of man that you don't trust is on the dollar. Some past president of the United States of America. Just think about it. So when this, when this stone hit the, the, the statue, it breaks apart. And it goes into the earth, and it covers the earth and fills the whole earth with a mountain. That's a new government coming. That, that is where we want to go today with the, with the little time that we have of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, is discussing with us. Um, look here what he says. We must have a new government, a new ruler and teacher of that government. You can't just set up politics thinking you know, no, a new kind of teacher got to come in order to make a new kind of ruler and a new kind of government. He says, since it is not patterned after the order of the old government or world, we must have a new government and a new people to operate that government. You can't just have a new government without the people being made. You know, we're in a world where everybody wants change, but they don't want to change. You want everything else to change but, but you. So the new government got to have enforcers to make sure that when truth is taught, you're going to live by the truth. Huh? Huh? You're not going to leave nothing. Look what Allah does. People say, he came to make a new nation and a new world. He didn't just come and set up a government and tell us to go ahead about it. He put us right in a mosque. He know what he's doing. Let me see how you act in there. Shoot, I ain't going to class. So if you had a nation and a government, you say, I ain't getting up today to go to that now your kingdom falling apart out of negligence. Huh? Oh, I don't like well, that happens in government, but do you love your nation enough to make sure that whoever you don't like, he's got a right to test us. Why should he trust us? When a man who's not worthy of trust is the only one that's been getting our trust. Anybody black try to work with us, they got to suffer like hell. When you see Louis Farrakhan, he did not climb no crystal staircase. We gave that man living hell. 
He got started in a temple like this. And all that group could talk about was, we don't like him. Who? Minister Lewis X. He ain't no good. So one brother got out of prison and he heard him talking. He said, well, shoot, he ain't no good. Why is he alive? So he went to get something to kill him. The only thing stopped him was he ran into Rodney Smith who had invited the minister to a Savior's Day in Chicago, was in the temple and then left, right? And that brother ran into Rodney Smith and told him what he was going to do, and he said, no, man, don't listen to them people. Lewis is a good man. That man ain't like nothing what they're saying and everything. So if we'd have had a government, just, y'all you know, don't need no mosque. Go past that and just set up a government. You might have had an assassination. Then another nation would look and say, man, we can take them over. They fighting each other. Let's go back a little bit. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, well, he didn't start it. He started us in a mosque. Why? Because there has to be a center for high learning. And high learning is the proper cultivation of us. If we're not applying high learning to people that believe we have failed in their cultivation, we're not here for cliches. And every, we're here to develop into a higher being. That's the only way you're going to have a higher civilization than the one you're living in right now. So Mr. Muhammad said, we got to have a new kind of people to operate this new kind of government. It starts out with a new ruler, something you can't get without a new teacher to teach you how to rule in a new way. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it like this. Um, um, we need a man who's totally uninvolved in present world corruption. If we can produce someone like that in this wicked world, we will have proof that God has come because only a God could make a man strong enough that he could withstand all the wiles of Satan and the wickedness of this world and come out good. Are you following? That come from a whole new kind of teaching. And as we said last week, a perfect education will give you 100% access to your brain. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, as the planets were made at right angles, so the cells of the brain of man were made to think right. If thinking right is in accord with our nature, then righteousness is the true nature of the original people. You can't have righteousness without truth. So the Quran says, so your brain was constructed in truth, even your mind was constructed in truth. Well, why are you doing that, Allah? I can guarantee your success after that. I can't guarantee your success if you're born, we're not like other creatures that are born and instinctively they go and act just like the ones that came before. We're born into a, a complete uh, a state of disorientation. We're just a baby. We, we have to go wherever somebody car carries us. We have to live in whatever kind of condition the ones that, that have care of the baby uh, are living in. Are you following? God works on the inside of the child. Until we get to him. The minister describes how the child may see a bright ball or something and it'll cause the child to stop crawling and he wants to stand up on his own. And you could see 
the child trying to stand up on its own, you know, and somebody will quickly say, oh, no, baby, don't try to do that. Your, your legs are too weak. But see, something's talking to the child on the inside. Now we're learning from the minister. That's God talking to the child on the inside. Go on and stand up. And why the child falls and why we fell when we took our first stand, that's the first time we felt the complete weight of our body. You can't feel it when you're crawling. You can't feel the full weight of your body when you're lying down. It's only when you stand on your own two feet. And then when you feel the weight of it, you try to balance yourself. We never learned how to balance before because we never carried our weight. For people to stand up, they got to have balance. And when you stand up, you feel the full weight of your existence. If I want my children to be better, damn it, I got to teach them. If I want a better home, I may have to build it. If I want to eat better food, let me grow my food and stop telling, uh, letting somebody else tell me what I ought to eat. If I want to see the killing stop, let me stop killing. What are you doing? Taking responsibility for carrying the full weight of my existence. And the first thing people are gonna do is the evil suggestion is you can't do it. Right. <laughs> now the Ukrainians left the USSR. That's Putin's argument, right? We were all one at first. Then they broke apart. So for years, for decades, they've been living on their own. They've been growing their food and grain and doing business with other countries and everything. They can do it, but we can't. You take some little raggedy people out of jail in England and put them in Australia. They don't know no more than Crocodile Dundee. They done built them a nation. They didn't come with no credentials. They didn't go to get their masters. Or nothing. Go look at the quality of the people that came. Hell, look at this country. Samuel Adams and all them, they was just white gangbangers hanging out in their own taverns. But they took them little scrawny states, as Malcolm X said, and they made a nation out of it. We got brilliant people in black America. Some are in government, some are writers, some are scientists. And all we're being told is we could never hope to build no country of our own. That's a pipe dream. While we watch other people of lesser quality be able to build them a civilization of their own. So Mr. Muhammad wasn't having it, and that's why they don't want his message out there. He knows that you can't have a new teacher who can teach someone to become a new ruler, who can make a new government without the knowledge being new. The knowledge can't be the same old knowledge we've been entertaining that's hidden from us the truth about ourselves. Make sense? Yeah, so, so, so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, goes on. Now, look what he said. He, Master Fraud Muhammad, God in person, he will create a new heaven and a new earth and a new Islam. Let's stop right there. See, as I said before, you know, some folk don't, don't, don't like to hear that. A woman was the first one told me that, Brother Muhammad, you can't change Islam. You can change anything when you come into a greater knowledge of That's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we, that's why he said we, 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 we could say that we didn't change Islam, we just came into a greater knowledge of Islam and so the practice is different. I'm dressed like this because I realized in the new Islam we don't come into a greater knowledge. I don't need to be in no skirt and sandals. Huh? White folks love a, a religion that makes you just 
concentrate on being holy and sanctimonious and everything, but you ain't building nothing on your own. Do you realize uh, the billions that are put in white folks' banks every Monday just from the black church? Billions! And with the mindset, because he has killed in us through the nurse putting a metaphorical needle in our brain, he's caused us not to think in a way that benefits us. You always, we always rationalize the irrational. That's what's keeping us from civilization. So Mr. Muhammad realized, you know, we've got to come. What God has given us is a root knowledge. He creates a new heaven, new earth, and a new Islam. Prophet Muhammad could have been said to bring a new Islam. When he got the revelation, you prayed toward Jerusalem. You was in Mecca, you prayed toward Jerusalem. Go read the history. They didn't start at the Kaaba. And, and not only did they pray toward Jerusalem, it was only two prayers. Two prayers a day. Then, as Dr. Wesley had to chop somebody down, because they talking about y'all talking about the mother plane, he said, well, you know, the Arab scholars believe that Muhammad rode a steed in the sky from Mecca to Jerusalem. That's why the Dome of the Rock is there in Jerusalem for the night journey, right? right? right, right. We've seen people get in a vessel that can take you up into the air. Right, right. We ain't never seen a flying horse except in Greek mythology. Zeus had them flying horses. You looking at that talking about alhamdulillah and say we crazy to talk about a ship. Huh? So we prayed toward Jerusalem, it was two prayers. But after this experience, he goes through this with Allah and it turns out, it started out 500 prayers. That's how the history read. Say, oh no, the, the, the prayer will turn into a burden. If you've got the people got to pray 500 times a day, you see, they need every one of them prayers. It's, it's the way we done got out of order with God. But you know, we would just spend our day praying. So they got down to 50 prayers. And Allah didn't cut it down any more from that. Then Allah said, then let one prayer count for 10. So when you do the five prayers a day, you're actually doing the 50 prayers as is counted with Allah. You have to, you have to, to think like God, you gotta look how he does math. Look, look at how Allah says, if you think of an evil deed and then don't do it, Allah counts that as one good deed. You thought the evil, but you didn't do it. Just, just, just look how he operates. If you think one good deed, see, and then um, you don't do it, you count as one good deed, but if you think of a good deed and do it, it's multiplied hundreds of times over. Just look at the math of God and how he puts the emphasis on the doing of good and rewarding that more. So when you do the math of God, he's putting 10 prayers into that one prayer that we do. So five prayers a day come to, so that's the first thing. He comes back with five prayers. He got to tell the community, we no longer doing two, we're doing five. And guess what? We're not going to pray toward Jerusalem anymore. We're going to pray toward the, the Kaaba. The Kaaba, where the, where the Quraysh have put 360 false gods inside? They, they still got the false gods in there. He said, but we're going to pray toward here and there. And the Quran says, they... Who made them turn from their Kibla? 
They were supposed to be facing Jerusalem. He said, Allah wanted to see who followed the Qibla and who followed Allah's messenger. So you talk about what, what, this is the right way, this is the right way. If you were so right, you wouldn't even have a messenger in your midst. The messenger don't come because everything is all right. Too much is wrong. That's why he has to raise somebody to teach you. So uh, Allah took Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, into a greater knowledge of what he wanted for the people. And guess what? Islam changed. From two prayers to five, Islam changed from praying toward Jerusalem to praying to the Kaaba in Mecca. Just look at that. That's a change. But we can't change Islam. Come on, come on. Well, this says he's going to make a new Islam. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the immutable principles will never change. They're universal. They'll never change. But as we come into a greater knowledge of Islam, See, then Islam will change and a new government and people. Then he says, the new earth referred to is a new people. That means somebody got to be taught in a way that they made to think different. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, he's going to work to he get our people to call each other brother and sister. See, somebody, you walking in the store, somebody's walking out, two men's eyes meet each other. Yeah, what's happening, brother? And you don't think nothing of it. But people suffered great insult for us to get to that point. When we went out trying to talk about you, my brother, you, my sister, we ain't got the same mama. I never saw you in my household growing up. I ain't no way near your brother or your sister. So it took it took a lot for us to get to this point, but we got there. Yes, sir. It took a lot. Pork never had a problem. Never. We ate so much pork, you never even had to do commercials. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> they started a commercial called the other white meat. We done got away from everything. <laughs> pork, and they said, did y'all remember the pork, the other white meat? <laughs> but we got to that point. Something new. And we're doing it while we're in the midst of the old. Look at this. The new earth referred to, it's a new people uh, who will change the old into such a great future that, the, that actually the earth will look like a new earth and a new earth will be made right here. Where? In America. Well, that, that ends, are we going to live in some other country? I don't want to separate because I, I, I don't want to go live in another land and everything. That ends that argument right there. We're going to be right here. This is our country. But a new ruler has to come over that country. And you can't have it unless it's a new kind of man. And a new kind of man, he'll look strange. In this environment, the environment of the colored man, he colors everything in a way so that it serves him. Our business world serves him. Our academic world serves him. Sport and play serves him. Our worship serves him. If all them black churches dump that money in another kind of bank of people of color just on a Monday, that ain't serving him. That's going to be a big problem. So the next thing you know, you'll hear on the news, we're investigating this bank for inappropriate dealings. I knew I shouldn't let them niggas have my money. I'm going to get my little $40. I had 43. What happened to the other fees? <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know, I act like that so I can bring this thing home. Because you, you'll be acting like that before you know it. 
and don't realize how we're not acting in our own best interest. So this has to be a root knowledge. Root knowledge means we go to the origin of everything and everyone. We had to go back to the present ruler's beginning. How did they get started? What was the idea that gave rise to them? What is their purpose in the world? When Mr. Muhammad asked the question in the lesson, he says, you know, how long ago? What did he bring with him? What kind of life did he live and how long before, you know, Moses came to give them the forgotten trick not, so they forgot it. They were reminded of it because there was a work for them to do. They took the weaker part of self to have it rule over us. When your weakness rules over you, you say, man, I want to get off this stuff, but I was doing good for six months. They say, damn, he back in the clinic. He worse this time. I'm not making fun of you, but I'm trying to show you the weaker part of us, man. It's got, it damn near got rulership over us. So, Mr. Muhammad is showing you got to have a new mind. And I showed you last week, the minister said, you know, the knowledge that brings about a civilization has at its core, the heartbeat of it is an idea. And that idea gives direction and gives energy to that knowledge. That means whatever they learn, they got to use it for their own advantage. They learned they could cure cancer. But the idea is, do we want all the people healthy? So even though we know it, we ain't telling them. And we're going to come up with something that keeps elongating the taking of medicine so we can make all kind of money. See, that's why Master Farad Muhammad is going to destroy the medical system. And see, if you look at the medical system, you still got the scepter of Moses' law, but the serpent is wrapped around it. Because the only way the serpent can look upright, he got to crawl up on something and then lean on it. And there, that just shows you it's a people who are serpentile, but when you come after them for their poisonous ways, they start uh, rehearsing and repeating Moses to you. Same way they do when they say well, they use Jesus as a shield for the dirty religion. As soon as you point out the dirt in the religion, oh, child, they're talking about Jesus. Put Jesus out there. Then make people think you're, you're down in Jesus and everything. Now they close their ears to what you have to say that could bring you into a greater light of Jesus Christ. Wow. See, in the mosque, you know, it's just a small place, but it becomes the center for the spiritual teaching. It becomes the center for cultivating us in a life of prayer. It becomes the center for our commercial life and everything. It should spring out from this. But when you minimize the mosque as just a building and them people over there, I'm going to leave it and go, well, well, I get it, you know. But the, but the thing is, a lost purpose for the mosque is the germ. Like, it becomes the firm resting place for the germ to have a place to, to develop in accord with higher learning. Go somewhere else and see where you get this. People get tired. You start talking about the wisdom and the moon does this and the... Shit, they so tired. I'm so tired of these niggas talking about all this out of space stuff and everything. Yeah, ain't nobody got no time to listen to you or me with that. But here, people are adding to what you're talking about. You know, in the early years, folk used to just get some coffee and be up all. That was before Starbucks and uh, Dunkin' Donuts. The Muslims be up all night going over the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mine. Backed up with this great knowledge. 
So now, um, Muhammad was asked about the mosque, and he said, you know what? The whole earth is my mosque. And you know, I had to look at that again when he was made to say that 1,400 years ago, the whole earth is my mosque. Almost my first day in the mosque, aside from getting the instruction of one meal a day, you know, I got the square mileage of the planet Earth, 196,940,000 square miles. I never was given the measurement of a mosque. I had to realize the day I walked into Islam, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan had the whole earth in his mind. That's why, you know, we're like Jonah. Well, I'm leaving them. I'm going to do my own thing and everything. You come back, not because of us, not because we're so great. This wisdom can't be found anywhere else. And as it spreads throughout the earth, when you try to get away, you keep running into God's wisdom through somebody that's been affected by the preaching of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And then you start talking about, yeah, I knew that. Now, oh, really, I didn't know you knew that because see, you went back to living like a Negro again. So, you know, don't nobody know you used to be in contact with that kind of wisdom and that. Really? You were, no. So pretty soon, you realize, you know, as the scriptures say, remember the place from where thou hast fallen. You say, I remember when I used to dress up like that and make class every Saturday morning. I remember when I did this. Yeah, I used to be there and I used to do this and that. What you doing now? See, you, you can hate this, but I can tell you one thing about this. You'll never forget it. Of all the events in your life, if you ever cross paths with the light of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you'll never forget it. It will remain in you. So look at here. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan, uh, I want to I read something to you that he talks about on page 12 of Closing the Gap, and then we close out. Look at here. He's, he's answering Brother Jabril about people criticizing him and the politics of the present world. He said, my answer will be based on a natural law and the scripture. So he talks about Daniel prophesied that a stone would be hewn out of a mountain without hands, and it will roll down a mountain, and it will smote an image, and then become a mountain that would fill the entire earth. He says, when a baby is conceived, it is conceived in a system that's already working. It feeds from that system at, as it is developing an independent system. It takes from a system already in existence through the placenta. It purifies as much as it can to feed on to grow itself into a new creation coming from that system. But now it's developing an independent system that will take on a life of its own. I believe we are to grow like that. And you know to some degree we, we, we become different than the life that we grew up in. That's why some people grab their child and say, I brought you into this world, I'll take you out. Why are you reminding them of that? Because they don't start acting like they just got here, you know, and nobody had nothing to do with it. Hmm? They don't develop an independent, you don't really got independent. <laughs> oh, look at this here, man. It's so beautiful. So he goes on to say here, we live in America. Is that a system? Already in existence. He said we have no other nation to go to. We live in the world leader. He said we must pull together whatever we can and filter it through the placenta or the blood of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You talk about being saved by the blood. See, the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is working like blood that forms around us a protection for us. 
Look at this. He said, we draw from this satanic mother, but it's filtered through a screening system called actual facts. A screening system called student enrollment. We screen it through lost found lesson number one, lost found lesson number two, even the problem book and English lesson number C1. The wisdom in these letters is a filter so that it will, we can develop our own system, hopefully somewhat free of that which is corrupting and destroying the larger system of body that we find ourselves in. The placenta, look what it is. It's a temporary organ. I didn't even know that. It's not made to last forever. It's serving a purpose. It joins the mother and the fetus and transfers oxygen and nutrients from the mother to the fetus and it permits the release of carbon dioxide and waste product from the fetus. See, we're growing in a system that already exists, but we are, we are moving toward an independent system. So we have to do little things that begin to give us a sign that we're building something new. That's our own secretary just opened his new shop over this weekend. You know, as we're laboring here, more have set up uh, various little shops and stores. See, we have to start somewhere. And Mr. Muhammad showed us before the first phase of his work was over how great it could be. He began to drive us. They were doing 240,000 eggs a year out of the farm in Michigan. We were growing every other kind of vegetable, bringing it up on truck, bringing watermelons up on truck. Millions of pounds of fish were being brought into the country. It was just a sign of what we could do. In 2013, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan showed us that Savior's Day, uh, what we could do if we saved a nickel a day. $18.20 a year. He said, no, not all 40 million of us. The Bureau of Labor Statistics show 16 million of us are working nonstop. So if just 16 million of us saved a nickel a day, what can you buy with a nickel? Nothing. Right? You can't buy anything with a nickel. So it's painless. Seven days a week, 35 cents a week, $18.20 a year. With 16 million of us, that's 291 to $294 million a year. What can we do in one year? Out of 105 HBCUs, we could buy 37 to 39 of them outright. These are colleges for, did you know that 80% of black judges, they went to a HBCU. Most of your black doctors went to an HBCU. The move now is to make black parents feel like your child ain't getting a good education if they go to an HBCU. So you're looking for an Ivy League school now. And they're making sure that they're, that they're uh, deplenishing any kind of real support to keep the HBCUs up. If you got a child in an HBCU right now, you'll see that they're struggling with housing, and other things that should be a cinch if a people thought in their own best interest, even if you don't intend to go to college, if we all saved a nickel a day and just put it into the HBCUs, we would be better off. Because the child could be learning academically at the same time they're learning that their academic learning and future was hinged on their people coming together to see them live better. They would be more committed to building a better future for us rather than just going to get uh, six, seven figures a year so you could drive a Maserati or something. No. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan showed a cotton farm was for sale. $34 million. So out of 294 million, that's a drop in the bucket. Here, let's get that. Why? They don't, you, I ain't picking no cotton. Man, please, they got machines doing it now. And machines that, that take the seeds out 
and producing, you can make sheets, pillowcases, spreads, clothes and everything, sell to so-called third world countries and make millions. But you know how many jobs you create just from that? A $34 million investment. There's a cattle ranch, he said, for sale for $70 million. $70 million. So you got, you got beef, you got steaks, you got uh, beef ribs or whatever. But the thing is, you got the hide. And with the hide, you got leather. You can make belts, uh, purses, coats, boots. Somebody's helping me out here. Just think, all of this... And we, but we're talking about selling it by the millions. Just, just, just think this up. How many jobs would that create? And with the cattle ranch that's in Texas, you go down to the bottom of Texas, you have to golf. Right across the water, there's a, a shoemaking factory for sale for just one million. By the time you take the leather into the shoe factory, you're making all kinds of shoes rather than waiting on Italy. Come on, somebody. You know, and on the way, you going through the swamps, so you're picking up lizards, snakes, gators. All this is, you just take all that into the factory. Huh? Oh, I'm going to get real with you, because I know, you, you, you know, you know it's a new Islam. You come to Philly. They say, where the Muslims? They got, they got a brim on. They stepping with gators, eel skin shoes and everything. Salam alaikum. Yeah. Black man is awake today, man. I love it. I love it. And the more we do for ourselves, our enemies will hate it, hate it. You should want your own civilization. All these people getting shot on South Street like this. Trying to mimic some mass murderer or somebody out there. When I came to the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, he was the only voice talking about us killing each other. And people tuned him out till we got to the Million Man March. Then the enemy went to work to discourage people and to try to separate them from him and from his magnetic appeal. So now you can see Allah leaving us to ourselves. That's what God does. He just gives you enough rope to lead to yourself. You don't have to worry about a devil getting you in hell and everything. You in hell. How much more pain is it for a mother to bury her child? What's more painful than that? How painful is it for a black woman to have to sit up and hold meetings to consider protecting herself because a man won't even do it? That's real painful. I said, well, we got some strong men in the community. Yeah, strong bodies, but weak minds. So it's going to take a tough, strong mind. And that's the kind of mind that's being made, and you got the evidence of it in the Messiah today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. If ever there was evidence that we could make a citizen for this new world with a new mind, that could bring the bones together. That's what J. Edgar Hoover is talking about. We got to stop the rise of the black Messiah. Because when he preaches, he could unite the masses. They're just disconnected. Baptists over here, Muslims over there, Christians over here, Hebrew Israelites over there, Crips and Bloods over here. We're all separated apart from each other. But his preaching out of an eye where he sees us as a whole because the honorable Elijah Muhammad told him, brother, don't worry about all them say You think for the whole. So when he preaches, he preaches for the whole. Everybody ain't got to join here. Everybody won't be in an FOI uniform. But everybody got to be dressed down up here. And for black men starting in Philadelphia, you can't get that training without the fruit of Islam. I'm sorry, I wish I could send you to the Boy Scouts of America, but if you don't learn from the FOI, damn it, your whole community gonna go down. You have proven that you don't have any training on how to save yourself. 
No, we're not greater than you, but what we got our hands on is greater. And it came about because we realized we needed help. And we were told, you got the best help that anybody could ever get, because the best knower is here. And if you just listen to him, like you know, well, I didn't meet him, yeah, but you met the man who did. Right. Say, well, I didn't meet him either, then you met the man who met him. Huh? Yes, sir. And the more you accept your own and be yourself, that's attractive enough right yes, there. Yakub was playing with the steel and he saw one piece had enough. That's because the other piece, it was chaotic in the organization of his molecules, but in one piece of metal that looked just like the other piece. But the, the molecules were lined up. They said when molecules are lined up properly, they become magnetic. So it drew the other people. So he said, I'm going to organize some people. And if you go get the book, um, Behold the Pale Horse, this is a white man that used to work in intelligence. He said, look, the plan is that the disciplined few would stay in control of the undisciplined masses. So like the wizard and the Wizard of Oz said, you know, you're not really just afraid or don't have a brain. Or you're just a victim of disorganized thinking. You <laughs> You get your thinking organized, and then you think in a way that's in your best interest. Right. See, and when you start thinking like that, that's what the messenger said, it's starting to produce a new mind in you. And man, you ready for high civilization. Thank you for listening, Isalam Alaikum. <laughs>
you know, young men, old men, and I, the uh, lesson say we're all equipped yes, to handle this said above. Is that right? High civilization. Yes. We'd love to have you as a part of it. All right. Thank you so much. Let Brother David talk to you. How you doing, black man? Good day, sir. Yes, sir. Good Marcus. to see you, man. Brother Marcus. Brother Marcus is with us. You live here in the Germantown area? Um, okay. I came here to live uh, with cancer treatment. Um, however, okay. um, it didn't go the way that they prescribed. And, uh, mm -hmm. They've given me a number. But uh, the joy of having one teach one is what brings me to your house. Praise, Praise be to Allah. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, you know, our national spokesperson for the minister, um, she was, she was um, a cancer patient who was described as not having long to live. But she went and told the doctor she found a new doctor. Yes. And well, she left chemo and that Sister Ava Muhammad. Right, That's right, been 40 right. some years ago, you know. So, you know, the minister talked about how the mind can affect the body. Right. Uh, and you believe me, yeah, we, we gotta learn about ourselves. You mentioned the uh, state of mental confusion, which is, uh, what I think so many of us, at least myself, have uh, taken upon myself, and it became a part of me, opposed to looking on high to see what's best. And I know now that no one determines my fate. Okay. My fate, I determine my fate. You help me with my faith. Okay. Okay, thank All you. All right, Brother Marcus. Hey, let's give it up for him. All praises due to Allah. Thank you all so much. And you'll know it when you go back to something else because you'll be back in darkness again. Uh, this is the light and the light of this man's world is going out. He's exhausted his wisdom. Uh, and uh, you know, um, before he goes out, you know, he's gonna go absolutely insane. They're, they're, they've, They've profiled us that we'll tear up this country, but it's really gonna be them that tears it up. And, and January 6th proved it. You know, um, they just went in there and tore that place up. And if they had got their hands on Mike Pence, Nancy Pelosi, and other people like that, this would have even been worse. They're trying to play it down right now. This just trying to, and Trump has proven that the justice system ain't nothing. They done put out writs and summons and everything. He just stick his finger in their face and we're going to defy that. No, I'm not giving that. Yo, you supposed to show your tax. I'm not showing nothing. It just, this is it. Him and Giuliani and everybody. This is just, and, but we're told, don't mess with the FBI because you know they don't care. They'll come get you and everything. They ain't bothering Donald Trump. Donald Trump wanted Dr. Oz to be your new senator. You see what happened. That man was fighting Dr. Oz about that little 943 vote. Somebody done got to him. And he didn't start saying, well, I support Dr. Oz and everything. Can you imagine Dr. Oz being your senator? Yeah, we, that's what I told my sister in Chicago. We got the Wizard of Oz here running. And, He's going to be the new senator. So, you know, may Allah bless you. I'm going to give it to Brother Joseph to close us out in prayer. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, no, you tell him. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Let's give him another round of applause. Our Delaware Valley Student Regional Minister, Rodney Muhammad. Dear family, um, I was instructed to let you know, as every Sunday, the famous Window Cafe is open for service today. So please stop before you leave. You've been spiritually fed, but stop back and take some physical food with you so that you can balance out what you received in the spirit and the psychological today from our Delaware Valley Student Regional Minister. So at this time, dear family, could you please, could we please stand for prayer? In the manner in which you are most comfortable, follow along silently. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world, the beneficent, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live, 
Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for aid. O Allah, guide us on the straight path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, and not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, and nor of those who go astray after hearing thy teaching. Say he, Allah is one. Allah is he upon whom we all depend. He neither begat, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. I bear witness that none deserves to be served or worshipped besides Allah, who appeared to us in the personage of Master W. Fard Muhammad. And we thank him for giving to us his wise choice in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And to the two of them, we are grateful for them giving to us the man that walks among us today, that messianic figure in the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in those names, let us pray. I mean. Our meeting is dismissed, dear family. Uh, go in peace, and as we're instructed, never to be the aggressor, but if we are aggressed upon, we don't just fight with those who fight with us. We fight like hell with those who fight with us. Assalamu alaikum.